Hello and welcome to another edition of Investing for Generations. Today it's kind of a special edition because lately uh, some people asked me uh, about my method to find the intrinsic value of a stock. So I want to talk a little bit about this today. We'll I'll tell you why this is very important for me or for every value long-term investor and um, how I find my intrinsic value. So let's go. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. Thank you. I want to start uh, with a quote of Benjamin Graham. And he said, in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine. So what he want to say with that? Uh, the prices we have at the stock market are just prices right now. In five minutes, it's different. Tomorrow, it's different. Whatever. And of course, it can be the price for a stock can be the, the true price, the true value uh, of the stock. But very often it's way higher than the value, it's even under the value. And, but over the long run, the price of a stock will go to its true value, to its fair value. So that's the idea behind that. So this is like in real life. In the short run, somebody can win elections just because he's a good actor, maybe with not so much value. Uh, but on the long run, uh, a man with a value uh, will just win the race. So it's up to us to find the companies, the businesses with a very high intrinsic value at a very small price right now because nobody wants them and nobody is voting for them right now. So what's the intrinsic value? The intrinsic value is a price a rational investor is willing to pay for an investment given its level of risk. So that's the mindset. That's the idea. We want a rational price, uh, a price which is at least on the intrinsic value, even better under the intrinsic value with a high margin of safety, but I will talk about this a little bit later. And also Warren Buffett just said the same. So price is what you pay, you should say right now, but value is what you really get. And so that's the idea, that's, that's the plan, that's the goal to find real value for small price. Sounds simple, but it isn't, of course. The whole idea of the intrinsic value with it for long-term and value investing is that a company, a business have to have a value and the value of a business is just the future earnings. And sooner or later with this future earnings, um, the stock price will just follow. And over time, the stock price sometimes will be over uh, the intrinsic value then we have an overpriced stock, or it will be under the intrinsic value. Then we have an underpriced stock. We have to find the businesses with real good intrinsic value, underpriced. That's the goal. That's the thing we are looking for. And for that, we need a method to find out the intrinsic value of a business and then just wait till the stock price is under the intrinsic value. And I know a lot of people and also at the universities, um, they teach the efficiency of the market, but also Warren Buffett have a very nice quote about that. And just he said, if I subscribe to the efficient market theory, I would still be delivering papers. And I mean, just look at the up and down and the craziness of the stock market. And it will be very clear that the market isn't efficient at all times. So the fair value of a business is just his future earnings discounted by your expected returns. And the stock price sooner or later will follow this earnings. But how to calculate that? And I use for that uh, the discounted earnings model. And 
Um, I will show you this on an Excel sheet, uh, for example, for uh, electronic arts. So the first thing we have to do is to find the growth rate for the future. And for normally I take the next 10 years for that. It's difficult to find the growth rate, of course, for a company. That's kind of a guess. Um, so you can look at the past. How much was it growing in the past and when you look for EA um, the growing in the last five years was 20% but we want the future and who knows if EA will grow uh, even in the next five years 20% so for that you can look at Yahoo Finance under the point analysis when you scroll down you find the estimate growth and for the next five years, the estimate growth is 12%. So we put in here 12%. Then the next is the discount rate. The discount rate is nothing else than your expected return. So, and this is a very personal. So one, one a return of maybe 20% or 15 or whatever. Um, then you can change it here. My discount rate for a growing uh, company like EA is normally 12%. And then we have a terminal growth rate because you can't expect that a company just grow and grow and grow forever. The first one is for the first 10 years and this one is for the next 10 years. I, I was a little bit conservative here and say yeah terminal growth rate of 6%. Then what we have to do is to put in the, the EPS, the last EPS for full year we have. This is um, $10.25 for EA for 2019. And then you can see these numbers are just the expected earnings discounted by the growth rate. And you see here for EA, for example, you have 10.25 for the whole first 10 years. This is just because the growth rate and the discount rate just equals out. Normally what you do if you if you calculate manually, first of all you put all the all the earnings in the future together and then discount it back. Um, this sp spreadsheet helps a little bit for that. You don't have to do this manually anymore. Um, and what we also see is for the second 10 years you see that the, the value just um, decrease and this is just because the discount rate is higher than the, my terminal growth rate. And then we do nothing else than, as I said, um, the stock price or the intrinsic value is just the earnings of the future of a business. We take the earnings of the first two, 10 years and the second 10 years and all of this, of course, is discounted by the discount rate for the first 10 years and the terminal growth rate. And then we come to a fair value of $179. The actual price is a little bit over $123. So we have a margin of safety of 31%. Uh, did a stock analysis of EA uh, in the past. Uh, there will be a link in the, in the video here, so you can look at all uh, on EA and why I think it's a buy right now. But this is an example and so you can do this for um, almost every business at least at the US market because you have all the data uh, at Yahoo Finance is seeking out for it so many other platforms. And it's even easier because you don't have to use a spreadsheet. You can just go to um, Google Focus. And on the website of Google Focus, you can uh, put in the ticker of the company you want to, to look for, and you will get just the same result. It's even better because uh, Google Focus also show you the growth rate uh, of the past. So, and you can also download uh, this Excel template. That's very nice. That's very helpful, at least for me, and helps me to find the intrinsic, intrinsic value of every company. But of course, and this is just one model. Um, there are a lot of other models like uh, the discounted dividend method 
full tiles rule number one calculator, Benjamin Graham calculator, and much more. You find um, almost all of them um, on on the internet, and you find almost for all of them also apps like I showed you here for the discounted earning model. Of course, if I'm not sure with my predictions and with the intrinsic value, um, I just use more than one. Sometimes I just use two or three, just to be sure I'm on the right path. But after all, with all these methods to find the intrinsic value, uh, don't forget, it's just a guess. Um, it's a prediction. And of course, nobody can look in the future, so it can't be wrong. It can be right. It can be even better. As Warren Buffett said, it's better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. What I do is um, I try to figure out the intrinsic value and normally very conservative intrinsic value and never buy over the intrinsic value. That's, that's my rule number one if you want so. I only buy if a stock is under the intrinsic value. I mean for very stable, for very boring um, business like maybe I had Pfizer lately or AT&T or something. It don't have to be a lot under the intrinsic value. I'm happy if I can get them maybe 10, maybe 20% under the intrinsic value. Um, but for a not so predictable business, um, I want that the margin of safety, normally I want at least 20%, even better 30, or if you are very lucky, uh, 50%. But this, of course, is not very often because the inefficiency in the market is not very often like that. And even if you make a mistake uh, in your prediction, and even if you made a big mistake maybe in your prediction or just uh, a business just falls short of what kind of reason, um, with a margin of safety, your error will be not that big because of course, at the end, not all of our investments will be right and some of them will just will just be a waste of time and money. But with the margin of safety, the margin of error is just so much bigger. And the other good feeling with, with this method for me is it just remembers me so much that I don't buy a stock, I buy a business. That have to be the mindset I needed for this mindset at least 10 years, but that's the only way to invest. Everything else is just speculation or betting, but I don't want to do this. I want to invest and I want to invest in just good companies. That's it for today. See you the next time. Then again with a stock analysis of one stock out of my portfolio. But before I leave, don't forget to subscribe. Ring the notification bell to never miss another video. And give me a big, big thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. See you the next time. Take care. Bye bye.